proper cup of tea is a cure-all and a, a, a cornerstone of British civilization. One boils the kettle and one must be prepared with a teapot into which one pours piping hot water. I suppose tea bags, if one wants to cut corners and have a cup of builder's tea, but tea leaves are what I was brought up with. Now, George Orwell, my brother Bertie's favorite author, always insisted on six teaspoons of tea in the pot. Utterly mad, it is just far too strong. I suppose it's better than it being weak. There is nothing worse than weak tea. One obviously pours hot water over the tea leaves and, and lets it brew. But, but one doesn't leave it for all eternity. One must keep an eye on the colour of the tea. Strain her over the cup and uh, Bob's your uncle, as they say. My preference is Crown Derby. Yeah, I inherited a wonderful fine bone china set from Granny Bullstrop. Now, Granny Bullstrop would have her tea served every morning in bed, surrounded by her dogs. She'd have a beautiful tray presented to her with her false teeth by her housekeeper, Mrs Brown. Her granny always took three heaping teaspoons of sugar in her tea. But she always joked that it was secretly frowned upon by servants, you know, post-war rationing, etc. But I say if she's frowned upon by her own class, one doesn't really take sugar with tea. It spoils the taste of tea, you see. It's inherently bitter. <sighs> and I suppose we must address the rather controversial topic of when one pours in one's milk. George Orwell, of course, insisted that one adds one's milk first. But I say PLU put their milk in after the tea has been poured. Non-new types put in their milk first. Oh, I say it's half past three. Time for tea. Mm-hmm. <laughs>